Well, we're on the job site again, and I thought before we actually started this shoot, it deserved a little explanation because you might have a hard time figuring out what it is we're doing. You probably can see that we have a garage door opening here, but at the point that the masonry is now, we're not at the top of the door. So what we've done is just drop down and we're gonna simulate a good way to cross a garage door opening and assure yourself that you won't have cracking at the top. I'm pretty sure most of you builders have had on, on a job at some point, cracks appear above the garage door opening and you wonder what you could do to alleviate that problem. We're gonna use a product here, it's a, a horizontal wire. Uh, most masons refer to it as Durawall. It's called four inch wire, although it's not actually four inches wide, just like a two before is not four inches wide. But it fits conveniently between a course of brick. And as we go along, you'll see how we actually make a bond beam above a garage door opening. A Couple of other things. We've put a couple of stiff knees or temporary supports underneath the angle iron crossing this opening. There's one here, also one here behind me. When you're building or constructing the masonry across the top of an opening, a large window, a large walkthrough area, perhaps in some larger homes or above a garage door, if you could put a couple of stiff knees or temporary support underneath the angle iron and leave them for at least seven days, you'd really be doing yourself a favor. You see, mortar gets about 90% of its strength in seven days, and it continues to harden, gets most of its strength in about 28 days, but it even hardens more after that. But if for about a week, if these temporaries could stay in place until this opening and the masonry across it develops its bond strength, then you'll also reduce the risk of cracking. Even though this lentil or angle iron, this piece of steel, is not at the top, I went ahead and put a piece of peel and stick, some people call it ice and water shield, a type of flashing that just adheres to the backup. I went ahead and put that on just so you'd see and remember that any opening that you cross should have flashing at the head. Really anything that penetrates that one inch air space, like this angle iron will do, must be flashed with weep holes to direct the water back to the outside. So I'm gonna enlist a little help, another mason's gonna help me with this, and we'll go ahead and put three courses on, and notice how the wire goes in, and you can see in your mind's eye why it would really make a strong bond beam across the garage door opening. Preferably, I would like to see the wire go in on the first three courses above the angle iron. If you have some kind of decorative feature here, maybe a soldier course or a jack arch or something, as soon as you get the soldier put on, or the arch in place, lay your first piece of wire on top of it, and then the next two courses. But uh, the three courses really makes a nice, strong bond. Many times you'll see a mason use this horizontal wire more commonly with block work. And uh, in the past, masons that I've worked with, perhaps some that you've observed, since this comes in 10 foot lengths, many times the opening is gonna be beyond 10 feet. What you'll see them do, at the end of one piece of wire, just butt the two. Not a good idea. Much of your strength is lost if there's no lapping where the two pieces of wire meet. So when you're building your beam, Make sure that the two pieces of wire lap a foot or so. Uh, even more would be better to make sure that there's no loss of strength where two pieces of wire come together. While we still have this mock-up here of uh, showing how you cross a garage door opening, one other type of common crack that I see around this sort of opening occurs right at the edge of the opening many times and kind of stair steps up toward the carnice. That's especially true if there's only a few courses from the top of the opening to the carnice area. What happens is this. This steel angle that we use to cross the opening, when it gets hot, on a hot summer day with the sun against this wall, it begins to expand. The brick do too, but not nearly as much as the angle iron. In fact, the thermal rate of expansion of steel is about twice that of clay. 
So what happens is this angle iron tries to grow this way, and on the other end, the same thing, of course, and it pushes the masonry and causes a crack at the corners. So, I just picked up a little piece of insulation that was laying here on the ground, but some type of compressible material. If it could just be laid against the end of that angle iron when the mortar's being spread, then once the brick are laid, there's room for that angle iron to grow in and out daily as it expands and contracts thermally without pushing the brickwork. You don't have a problem if there's a large mass of masonry on both sides, only if there's a short return or if you're up close to the carnass. Perhaps you've seen cracking like that. Just some small type of compressible material at the end of that angle iron to make sure that it's not bound too tightly in the mortar and it has room to move will do the job.